this is a real exciting day for me and, and probably the most excited I'll be all day, so take notes. Um, we have the entire cast of The Evil Dead with us tonight, along with uh, our, some of our crew guys, actually. Uh, let me just have them all start coming out. We have our ladies of The Evil Dead. We got uh, Betsy Baker, Ellen Sanweiss, and Sarah York. We, well, here they are. Yeah. <laughs> We got our makeup guru, Tom Sullivan, right there behind him. We have Rich Demanicor right there. Ted Ramey behind him. And, um, and this guy. Oh, yeah, Bruce Campbell right there. All right, I'm just say, gonna I'm just gonna throw it out to you guys in a sec. I got one question though okay. for the group. Go try, for to, it. try to treat this as a serious event for at least one serious. minute. Please. Time's up. Uh, and this is this is something <laughs> I never actually heard addressed before. Either before uh, the film started shooting, or maybe during, or even after, did any of the actors sort of consider the relationships of all these characters before? the story begins. I mean, were they, were they like college friends, were they... Could you rephrase that? What, what kind of horse shit are you talking about? I'm just gonna turn my microphone off now, so, yeah. Okay, all attempts at this as being a serious event have been okay, thrown no, to hell. Seriously. The question was, just before we started filming, or anytime during the shooting, did we consider the relationships of the characters? Right, because oh, there's the obviously actors? a fifth wheel there. And, right. No, 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 of, well, the, of the characters. Excuse I mean, me, yeah. did I hear answer. you say fifth wheel? <laughs> yes. You mean like, who is the star and who? No, 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 no I just no, mean... No, no, no. talking about the I mean, relationship the characters. of the characters. No, I now, think I can answer that. And, and uh, with all due respect, um, no. <laughs> no. Can, no. Wait, can I talk as the fifth now, wheel, though? The fifth wheel thing? Did any? How many of you in the audience knew that I was actually Ash's sister? Okay, you get so a free fifth, DVD. You were? Does, it, does a sister count as a fifth wheel? Well, that's right. We gave them all away last night. Sorry. None yeah, of you can have free DVDs now. this morning. <laughs> What I've always wanted to know, though, is, is was Ash my younger or older brother? What do you think, Ash? Uh, I think we were uh, we were twins. We were. <laughs> Did he just make a face when he said that? Because no, I couldn't no, see. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. No, very now. respectful. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Paternal. All right. So, any questions that all of you have? There's all. Oh, the there's one right one. here. And when you ask your question, could you please stand up like in seventh grade? Yes, right here. Right. Someone had a, we had a question right yeah. there. Please stand up and share your question. Yes, don't look behind you. It's you. Yes, right there. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you? Who are you? Where are you from? And why are you here? Thank you for your question. Good night. You drove from Milwaukee. All right, you drove all, right, all, we'll, all the way to the... All right, we'll all speak, right. Uh, we'll speak more Toronto. slowly. <laughs> now that you guys have had a chance at Tehran and meet some of the fans in the movie, what's one of your more memorable experiences meeting some, some of the enthusiastic fans? What is one of our more memorable experiences? Well, I have to tell you, just at um, a recent convention, we had a guy come up and he had his entire... No, it wasn't his arm, it was... His entire leg. His thigh. His thigh. The upper and portion. I mean upper thigh. We saw a little more than we were. I can do better than that. I can do better than that. Wait a minute. Bruce. Excuse me, Bruce. No, sorry. Bruce, I think the question was. You know, you know, I don't give a shit. I can do better than that. <laughs> I was at a book signing, and a guy came up and he put an 8x10 photograph in front of me, and it was a very strange rendering of Army of Darkness, and I said, the poster from Army of Darkness. I said, why does that look strange? He said, because it's tattooed on my entire back. Okay, Bruh. so to finish our story, <laughs> so to finish story <laughs> this guy had us tattooed. Had Go all ahead, three Becky. ladies on, our, on his upper thigh. Mm -hmm. And so he had to sign it. He had to sign his thigh. La, la, la. So we had the fun. next day we saw him, at a, uh, at a, uh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you had to sign his thigh? We uh -huh. had to sign his That's thigh. That's an interesting reason. With a Sharpie. He paid him. No, he paid us a lot of money. So the very next night, we went to a Don't worry, Ted, the, the thigh's the, the limit, so it's all right. <laughs> and he, during the day, had had our signatures tattooed onto his thigh. So he had our faces and our signatures right up there. And that's the end of that story. Next question. Yes, right there. Yes. I'm going to go 
kids all get together for the reunion, and you probably do that at other times, but do you hang out or see each other if it's not anything to do with the movie? No. Never. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> with you guys, it'd be great. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're in room 506, 509, 511. <laughs> Actually, we all live in, in different places. There are uh, a couple of us are in LA. I'm in Detroit. Bruce is in some bunfuck Oregon place. <laughs> and, um, Ted is uh, in a special Ted, center. Ted's in LA and, and I'm in Michigan. He's in lockdown. Here. We've got some more Michiganders here, but no, we, we really prefer not to see each other at all. It's hard sitting here with them right now. Anyway, no more questions? Yes. Uh, Bruce is the biggest puss in Evil Dead. How can he see the only one? Hey, come on, asshole. Come on up here right now. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> no, no, the bookshelf was real wood. It wasn't styrofoam. And nobody else is. So if I understand your question, why is Bruce the only one on the poster? Could you rephrase your question in more insulting terms, please? <laughs> yeah, there's people on the poster who aren't even... Well, yeah, that's a Bruce, good question. Bruce has, was one who of the producers of the movie. Uh, why did you make the poster without us and get some stupid woman off the street to pose instead of us? Yeah, Bruce, why did you do that? Okay, you can all shut your face, first of all. Uh, that stupid woman was Bridget Hoffman, a very sweet woman. Uh, hello. Uh, who answered our phone calls. Uh, I have no freaking idea why we didn't Bruce use you in the poster. Bruce was sleeping with her, and that was pretty much why she was on the poster. <laughs> no. So? <laughs> All right, someone must have... Let's have another insightful question. Hey, over there. Get the wall. Stand up and shout. We have a new question right there. St yeah, no, you. Yeah. You. Did anybody get hurt during the film? <laughs> Did anybody get hurt during the film? He wants to know. I believe the answer would be yes for all of us. Yeah. Do you so want me? Specifics? I was emotionally scarred. <laughs> She's not was is. We pretty much all the proceeds from this convention go to her psychiatrist. My therapist. Bills. Yeah. <laughs> Let yep. me give you a list. Remember when I was dragged out of the cabin? Yeah, that really hurt. You saw me, that was no little stunt double. Did you see when I got my head whacked off? Yeah, that really hurt. And how about when Sam and Bruce and Rob said, look, Betsy, it's not gonna be a problem. Look, we're gonna go get some styrofoam beams. You just pick them up at Sears. So I'm thinking styrofoam, you know, styrofoam, you know, at the beach with your beer in it. Well, that shouldn't be styrofoam. hard. Styrofoam. Should, yeah, styrofoam. Cups. Oh, no. That really hurt. <laughs> And Ellen, didn't you, during the branch rape scene, didn't you get a splinter in your branch career? Branch rape? What branch rape scene? Spl the one, splinter you know. Splinter in her rear? Do you guys remember a, a career. branch rape scene? <laughs> I got a few splinters. That, you know, a little minor case, minor, minor case of Dutch elm disease. Very, very minor. <laughs> Okay, a few cuts, a lot of blood that was really my own. But now she's branching out. And now I'm branching out. You know, did, went did, out on a, a limb a little bit, but I'm okay. Did the contact lenses injure anybody's eyes? I mean, any issues um, like that? Yeah. No. I, I'm actually uh, blind. I think the contact lenses were just mostly annoying, but no permanent injuries. Oh, good. And yeah. scary. Yeah, it's okay, Tom. Tom feels, Tom Sullivan feels badly for us. He's oh. been feeling badly for us ever since. He was kind of our, our protector. He was our nurturer. He's yeah. our torturer. Yeah. Yeah. He and tortured, well, then he nurtured. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was not injured in making the movie at all. Oh. No, no injuries at all. Tell him about your ankle, Bruce. No, I was not injured at all. Sorry, it was a very happy shoot, very short shoot. Uh, very comfortable shoot. Uh, we we shoot all knew Miami? what we were doing. We got a lot done every day. Uh, had no difficulties, no delays in production. We shot the movie in four days. It was an excellent, excellent experience. We excellent question, too. Thank Delusional you very much Bruce. for that. Delusional We've got a question right back there. Yes. Is the 
Oh, wow. Will the Cabin DVD set include the Within the Woods short, he wants to know. I believe that Bruce has a saying for that, if I may say it myself. Please. Um, I, and this is not me talking, this is Bruce. I believe it's when monkeys fly out of my ass. Uh, I've never said that, by the way. Yes. Never. I've never, ever said that. I would never be so rude to you, sir. I would answer directly I'm and honestly uh, every I'm time floating. you asked a question. It's probably uh, the answer was the seventh of room. never we was the answer was the correct here. answer. Go ahead, stand up. Okay, when I first saw Evil Dead, I couldn't help but wonder. You can tell what the play is here. You're all going to the cabin. You're there to party down. Why Shut did up. Ash bring his sister? <laughs> it, if we were going to the party to part, if we're going to the cabin to party down, why did Ash bring his sister? That's what you want to know. To sell her for beer money. <laughs> <laughs> it's an excellent question, by the way. You know what? I what? hope it doesn't reflect on his relationship with Linda. Yeah, I think Linda was a little slow, <laughs> if you know what I mean. You know, I I think that I gave, I think that I was there to bring some class. To the, to the whole Especially operation. Especially the, and the it dress. Didn't, it didn't really the work. The designer babushka. Yeah, the, well, that's, that was my gypsy era. Right. The rotas. I don't know why the hell they brought Cheryl along. She was a bitch. <laughs> she was, I don't know. If she goes, Ashley, no, she's your bad. little sister. Take her with you or you don't get the car for the weekend. <laughs> I believe it was handy to have an extra person to kill and torment. Yes. That too. Way over here at the end of the front row. Sure, so how much production time was involved in all the stop motion he wants to know? That uh, was a solid three months. We took a day to set up a shot and then a day to shoot it. It was a day or two to set up a shot and then a day to shoot it. There were about a little over 30 shots that we did. And then there were a few extra pickup shots as well. But uh, it was all done in the basement of Bart Pierce, uh, who was a co-cameraman and uh, uh, co-animator. It was one of the best collaborations I'd ever had. But uh, amazing to watch that two and a half minute sequence go by so quickly and that's, you know, big punk. The basement is now a museum in southern Michigan. <laughs> Coated with blood. Yes. Right here, how about? Yes. This might be kind of a sensitive question. A uh, sensitive we question like we have. Yeah. We like those. We're sensitive since, people. Since it was, I'm assuming, a non-union shoot. Since it was a non-union shoot. How <laughs> residuals. How did how did we handle residuals? Yeah. That's true, it's isn't it? It's a good question. Does it trickle Does down it trickle to us? Down. Did I hear that's the word? Did I hear the uh, trickle down theory? Well, we're gonna do trickle down yes, economics. No, that's Believe another. It, yeah. Well, yeah, we uh, all the money uh, coming in. Uh, we're what doing money? the best we Who can. I don't have any money. I uh, I don't recall. I don't recall not receiving or recalling money. A check. <laughs> Residuals. Yeah. Residuals that was one of the, be the nice best thing. Yeah. Residuals. Yeah. Um, basically, we didn't make any money off of this movie, and there were no residuals. But I don't know, Bruce, would you like to answer that? Well, before he does, before just to fill you guys in, for those of you who don't know, residual check, in case you don't know, is every time a movie is shown, theoretically, an actor gets a check. Now, this money goes down exponentially, so it may start as your first showing is, oh, say, a couple hundred bucks. Eventually, by the time it, you know, gets to effects and then to, you know, loser bounce cable in, you know, Romania, you're receiving about .001 cents for that. And I've gotten checks, I think we all have, for 0, 0.0 money. Um, in fact, there's a bar in Los Angeles called Residuals. If you bring in a check for, for under a dollar, dollar yeah. they'll give you like a Meisterbrow beer and you can go cry in your beer. <laughs> And in that bar, you'll see, you, you, you walk in there, it's incredibly depressing. Fun if you're not an actor. <laughs> but uh, alarmingly uh, cold water on your face if you are, because you walk in there and you see guys like, oh look, that guy was on, he was like the third bad guy in Charlie's Angels, wasn't he? And you see another guy, that guy was on Knight Rider. And I'm not talking about like the 2000 remake. This is like 1981 people going, they're going, man, I just, I was so good when Hasselhoff gave me that line and no one ever <laughs> called me back. So these are residual checks and we actors get 
dang few little of them. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, sir, I'll also answer your question a little more specifically. It's a thing called a contract that actors sign. <laughs> And they can either sign it or don't. And once they sign the contract, it's a written binding agreement. And we're happy to stick by that written binding agreement and even accept extra money on top of that after the fact. So I hope that answers your question, sir. Thank you very so, much. So let me answer the question. We, the ladies, we never heard of the word residuals and that trickle down thing. Mm, no. We were 20 years old, we were, all right? I was 20 well, years old. Give us a break. Yeah. We didn't know. We did it for the experience, the love of the genre, because of our respect of Sam and Bruce and Rob. We made up for it in providing a fun, exhilarating shoot. (laughs) (laughs) A short, professional shoot that was very comfortable, excellent working conditions. Man in the red shirt. (laughs) (laughs) I did my own stunts, yes. The flipping thing, you're referring to Evil Dead Part 2 now. I don't believe I flipped in Part 1. <laughs> you did cartwheels. Was that an off-the-cuff sort of thing that I just flip myself? Because I, I just feel like, Sam, I feel like flipping myself in this shot. What do you think? Yeah, try it, man. Try it. Go for it. Um, no, I was instructed by Sam to flip myself. Because he says, I know you can flip yourself. So fucking flip yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll do it as many times as I tell you to do it. Uh, Sam and I used to do uh, piss-poor ac- acrobatic tricks in a, uh, an act we had called the Bonzoid Sisters uh, for talent shows in high school. And so we both could do that, and he knew I could do that. And it was very... I'm sad to this day that he knew I could do that. I can vouch for the fact, because I went to high school with Bruce, and I would walk down the hall with him. We would just be walking, and all of a sudden he'd do a flip, land on his back, throw all his books in the air, and I, I was always his best audience. Uh, I was having an epileptic seizure, and she was making fun of it. So I, you know, I'm a little upset by that, actually. Thank you, Ellen. Over yes. here, in the with, the, with the baseball cap. That's, uh, yeah, that's what it is. Please stand up and share your question for the whole class. Why did you change your name? Why did you change your name? Why, why did name you change your name? Come on, why did you change your name? <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> I understand, I understand the question, okay. Uh, at the time, I was in the Screen Actors Guild. This gentleman uh, referred to the union. Um, I was in the Screen Actors Guild, Guild, but however, I was pulling myself out of the business because I wanted to have a house, and I wanted to eat once in a while, like kind of on a regular basis. So I was sort of pulling <laughs> myself out of the business. And I was invited to uh, audition, and I turned them down. I didn't want to audition. I was done. And about a month later, I went back and did it, and unfortunately got the part. Um, <laughs> so to not make the union mad, I just changed my name. Which made them That's mad. That's all. And then Which made they, them even more and mad. And then when my good buddy Teresa went in and said, hey, we made this movie and I had to change my name, but, you know, I don't want to get in trouble or anything. That's when they called me up and said, hey, you're busted. Come over here. And I had to sit and talk to the union for a while. Yes, right here. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, how exactly did you find all these actors? Who are you referring to, sir? Who are you directing your question to? How did we find these these actors? On the street, they were just... Uh, How did you discover this talent? Ellen, uh, uh, both Sam and I knew from high school, so Ellen was a shoe-in. We knew we were going to use her. Uh, Betsy and Teresa, we auditioned. We, we, uh, through local talent agencies, and uh, same with Rich slash Hal. Yes, we found them. We found them by placing ads, and... uh, Why, where did you think we found them? (laughs) Random people on the street. Uh, no, sir, sorry, you're this wrong. This gentleman with the camera. Yes, uh, first of all, Betsy Baker, you're the most beautiful woman in cinema. Betsy oh, Baker, you're the most beautiful, beautiful woman in cinema. cinema. Yeah. That's my boy. This question is for the whole cast. Uh, what is your most, or I should say, what is the most horrible thing that Sam, Sam ever did to you? What's the most horrible thing that Sam ever did to you? Mm. Why don't we start with you, Ellen? Sam did anything horrible to me. It's what it's what he made me do that was horrible, and I think we all know what that was. <laughs> so let's not 
not even discuss it? <laughs> we did have what we called the latex point yeah. on the shoot, where every actor at some point would basically freak out and melt down because they've been in makeup too much. They've been in latex makeup too long. Uh, so look, it was a it was a 12 week shoot. You don't shoot low budget movies for 12 weeks. You shoot low budget movies for five days. So we shot for 12 weeks and basically damaged uh, mentally and or otherwise every crew member, every cast member, every piece of equipment we ever rented. When we got back to Detroit, they said you are not renting from us anymore. Any more equipment? We destroyed a white pickup truck during the course of the shoot. The one that I would ride in, in the back of covered with blood because they wouldn't let me sit in the front seat. Uh, we ruined cameras, camera cables, uh, we hurt actors, we shoved basically white contact lenses in their eyes that should only be in for 15 minutes at a time, only five times a day. We, did, we would put these things in their face and they'd be wearing them for an hour at a time, 10 times a day. That's a lot, do the math. So. You know, this was a nightmare shoot for everybody, and it took about three months for people to start talking to each other again after the initial shoot. So do you blame Sam for having last night? Uh, I, don't, I don't blame Sam Raimi for anything. We were all there happily, willingly. We had, none of us had any idea what we were getting into. It's very simple. And as a result, by putting in that torment for 12 weeks, I think it reflects on the movie, and the movie has a certain sort of docu-horror quality to it <laughs> that you can smell from the oozing from the pores of the movie is the difficulty in shooting it. Right. We've got a man right in the back with a baseball cap. Yeah. Yes, did you ever figure that you would all just be ever be like a t-shirt? Did you ever figure you'd be in a t-shirt in your wildest dreams? Or a lunchbox. Or a lunchbox. Yes. lunchbox. Never, Never in our wildest Dreams Ellen used to pray at night that her face could be, her, dis, her distorted, disfigured face could be on a lunchbox. Didn't you, Ellen? Didn't you tell me it's, that once? It's a girl's wildest dream. Yep. Yeah. This lady. Right How is the moon shine in Tennessee? How is the moon oh, shine in Tennessee? It's darn good, man. Tell you what. It's pretty damn good. I, I actually, I, I, I remember I was only 14 and only there briefly. I was supposed to be there for three days, but because they were lacking six crew members, I was there for two weeks and I had to go back to junior high school and they wouldn't let me. But there was a guy named Dale who, who's uh, no longer with us, but uh, Dale worked on the picture briefly. I think so, wasn't he? Oh, shoot, that's Evil Dead 2. Never mind. Meh. I'm having a, Gary it's because of all that moonshine. I do remember having a sip of it, though, at, when I was 14 and uh, uh, I, I remember passing out and... Uh, uh, wishing I was anywhere else but there. It was, it's the nastiest stuff that I've, but it's a quick drunk. I mean, you know, if that's what. And you know. we were shooting in the Bible Belt, so we didn't have a lot of options, and we couldn't buy alcohol anywhere, so we were happy to have a little moonshine. Uh, there's a way to test moonshine, uh, for those of you who are interested. Uh, pour it into a mason jar cup, the lid, and light it on fire. And if it's a soft blue flame, it's good. If it turns orange, it's been distilled in a car radiator. <laughs> so they recommend not to do that. You can also shake it up. And if little bubbles float to the surface, tiny bubbles, no troubles, <laughs> is what they say. Okay. It used to bead up. If you poured it into a styrofoam cup, it would bead up around the cup, yeah. and the cup would start to melt in on itself. <laughs> and we would use it in between shots to throw onto the fire when we stopped drinking it, when we realized it was bad for every part of our body. We would throw it on the fire just before we started filming. So in scenes where the fire is looking particularly good, it means it's been you know, given a burst of moonshine before we shot. All right, the woman in the maroon shirt. A lot of us have children. What do your children think of being cult movie icons? Well, my daughter thinks it's uh, kind of odd when she hears me on the phone talking to either one of them saying, well, do you think we should bring the, the shot where I'm chewing off my hand? It's just kind of an odd thing, but she's, she's never really seen the movie. Yeah, and I have a teenage girl and a teenage boy and my son really could care less he actually just, whenever I go to a city, to a convention, hopes that I'll pick him up either, you know, like a Cubs t-shirt or a Bulls t-shirt. That's, that's the primary, primary excitement for him. 
My kids and their friends think that they have the coolest mom in the high school. Oh. All, right. All right. All right. Frankly. <laughs> um, right over here in the second row. How did we find the cabin itself? The cabin proper. Um, Take I-75. Yeah. Uh, you know what? There was a local guy named Gary Holt. Gary, quote, here's the deal I worked out, Holt. Um, he led us to it eventually. We looked at a number of places. We actually had a cabin uh, for a while, and then it fell out. And so at the last minute, we found this other cabin. And it was a real race to the finish to get it ready in time because there was four inches of cow manure throughout the entire cabin because the cows had free range of it. So when we got it, we had to tear out walls and ceilings. There was no electricity to the cabin. There was no trap door. There was nothing like that. So we had to customize it. We added windows, porches, all, you know, old swings, uh, a work shed to one side. No plumbing, no heating. No plumbing, no heating. There was jack shit going on with that cabin. And, and the driveway was about a quarter mile straight down that became a hell, a hell, a hell march. Uh, once it started raining. And it, it was the coldest winter on record in uh, Tennessee that winter, and the, one of the warmest in Michigan. We left Michigan because we were afraid it was going to be cold. So <laughs> it was a good decision on, on everyone's part. Yes, the man with the glasses, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when and where was the first Who's asking that? Please stand up, sir. When, when and where was what? When and where was the first convention? First convention. For all of us together, the Anchor Bay. It was Anchor Bay uh, when he, they learned about the three of us because we had sort of remained um, in the shadows Hiding. for 20 years. We just didn't know that it was so well liked. But uh, we came out in 19, uh, what, three years ago? Yeah, 2002. 2002. And we all met in Detroit for the first time since the movie had been shot. And they sold out, I, I don't know, four shows of the movie in, in the uh, Royal Oak Theater. That was a reunion of sorts. But uh, of course, Bruce and Ted had been going to conventions for a while. And we didn't really know what it was all about at all. And then we thought, hmm. We could start doing this convention thing. What so the three of us just do? started about two or three years ago. The time capsule is still there. No one has found it, even though people have. I have signed several bricks from the fireplace because people have gone back, found the cabin, which incidentally is a bad idea, trying to find the cabin. Can I just say that for any of you treasure hunters? You will get your ass full of buckshot if you go back there. It's on private property. They don't want you there. They don't think it's cute. They don't think it's funny. They're tired of freaks trying to find the cabin. All right? Let me just say that. Guys, we got, we got time for two more questions. Make them good. Two more. All right, this man's head is hand up a bunch. Thank you. Now, this is uh, more of a question. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, sir. I have photographs of the cabin from someone who's, who went to the cabin. <laughs> we have... Do we have her shot up with buckshot? Uh, yes, I have a, a, po a photograph of her ass full of buckshot right here. <laughs> uh, someone has posed in front of the uh, fireplace, which is the only remaining thing because several years after we filmed, the cabin burned down because squatters took over the cabin after we left and were lighting fires in the main room, not in the fireplace, oddly enough, but on the floor of the main cabin, which happened to be wood. So big surprise that it burned down. But uh, they probably didn't have any moonshine in them at all. Uh, very nice photographs. Thank you very much. Right. Okay, so on with the question. Uh, this is more of a question for Bruce. Yes, sir. The movie took like four years to make. The movie took four years to make. Uh, we weren't ready to drop anything, no matter how long the film took, uh, because we were obliged to investors. You know, we had legal binding documents that we signed. There's there's an impression that this movie was an amateur production. It was a college production. Nothing could be further from the truth. We certainly didn't know what we were doing, um, <laughs> but we signed a bunch of contracts with investors. Every investor had a contract, and they put their money in fully expecting to get it back. So it didn't matter if we were one year in, two years in, three years in. 
we in fact had to get their money back, so we had to keep going. So for four years, that was all we could do, was we would wait, sometimes get more money, shoot a little more, get more money, and continue on. One last There's question. There's a young gentleman in the back row here. Yep, you. You were essentially the main character in like the first half of the movie, but then like during the second half, you die off. How do you feel about that? How do you feel that you died off in the second half of the movie? But we're prominent in the first. You were kind of disappointed, you know? <laughs> um, you know, I think that I got to do so much during the first half that, you know, spending a little cellar time, I think, was actually a little relaxing. <laughs> and, um, no, I was, I was fine with that. But she was the first monster, you know, technically. So that kind of, what else are you going to do? Is she going to come back and say, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm all right now? She already pulled that one. She tried to get back in the movie you saw. But instead you gave that line to somebody who Everything's could deliver right a little now. better. Yes. Right. And you got some of the best quotes in the movie. Too. Oh, yeah? Like, what's your favorite? Is your sister Cheryl? Uh, <laughs> that yeah. is a good one, yeah. Uh, guys, they're all going to be all over this building signing whatever you put in front of them. Bruce is downstairs signing uh, books, and everybody else is in the main dealer room. Guys, thank you so much for thank coming. You. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, this is a real exciting day for me, and, and probably the most excited I'll be all day, so take notes. Um, we have the entire cast of The Evil Dead with us tonight, along with uh, our, some of our crew guys, actually. Uh, let me just have them all start coming out. We have our Ladies of the Evil Dead. We got uh, Betsy Baker, Ellen Sanweiss, and Sarah York. We, well, here they are. Yeah. <laughs> we got our makeup guru, Tom Sullivan, right there behind them. We have Rich Demanicor right there. Ted Ramey behind him. And, um, and this guy. Oh yeah, Bruce Campbell, right there. All right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw it out to you guys in a sec. I got one question though okay. for the group. Go try, for to, it. try to treat this as a serious event for at least one minute. Serious. Please. Time's up. Uh, and this is this is something <laughs> I've never actually heard addressed before. Either before uh, the film started shooting, or maybe during, or even after, did any of the actors sort of consider the relationships of all these characters before? the story begins. I mean, <laughs> were they like college friends, were they? Could you rephrase that? What, what kind of horse shit are you talking about? I'm just gonna turn my microphone off now, so yeah. Okay, all attempts at this as being a serious event have been okay, thrown no, to hell. Seriously. The question was, just before we started filming, or any time during the shooting, did we consider the relationships of the characters? Right, oh, of the actors? A fifth wheel there. And, right. No, 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 of, well, the, of the characters. Excuse I mean, me, yeah. did I hear you say fifth wheel? <laughs> yes. You mean like, who is the star and who? No, 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 no. no I just no, mean... No, no, no. talking about the I mean, relationship the of the characters. No, I now, think I can answer that. And, and uh, with all due respect, um, no. <laughs> no. Can, no. Wait, can I talk as the fifth wheel, though? The fifth wheel thing? Did any, how many of you in the audience knew that I was actually Ash's sister? Okay, you get so a free fifth, DVD. You were? Does it, <laughs> did a sister count as a fifth wheel? Well, that's right. We gave them all away last night. Sorry. None yeah, of you can have free DVDs now. this morning. <laughs> What I've always wanted to know, though, is, is was Ash my younger or older brother? What do you think, Ash? Uh, I think we were, uh, we were twins. We were twins. <laughs> Did he just make a face when he said that? Because no, I couldn't no, see. No, no, no. no. Okay, yeah. no very yeah. respectful. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Paternal. All right, so <laughs> any questions that all of you have? There's all oh, we there's have one, one right here. And when you ask your question, could you please stand up like in seventh grade? Yes, right here. Right. Someone had a, we had a question right yeah. there. Please stand up and share your question. Yes, don't look behind you. It's you. <laughs> yes, right there. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you? Who are you? Where are you from? And why are you here? <laughs> Thank you for your question. Good night. <laughs> 
You drove from Milwaukee. All right, you drove all, right, all, we'll, all the way to the... All right, we'll all speak, right. Uh, we'll speak more Toronto. slowly. <laughs> now that you guys had a chance to tour around and meet some of the fans in the movie, what's one of your more memorable experiences meeting some, some of the enthusiastic fans? What is one of our more memorable experiences? Well, I have to tell you, just at um, a recent convention, we had a guy come up and he had his entire... No, it wasn't his arm, it was... His entire leg. His thigh. His thigh. The upper and portion. I mean upper thigh. We saw a little more than we wanted. I can do better than that. I can do better than Wait that. Wait a minute, Bruce. Excuse me, Bruce. No, I'm sorry. Bruce, I think the question was... You know, you know I don't give a shit. I can do better than that. <laughs> I was at a book signing, and a guy came up, and he put an 8x10 photograph in front of me, and it was a very strange rendering of Army of Darkness, and I said the poster from Army of Darkness. I said, why does that look strange? He said, because it's tattooed on my entire back. Okay, Bruh. so to finish our story, <laughs> this, <laughs> this guy had us tattooed. Had all three tattooed. ladies on, our, on his upper thigh. Mm -hmm. And so he had to sign it. He had to sign his thigh. La, la, la. So we had the fun. next day we saw him at a... Uh, at a, a no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you had to sign his thigh? We uh -huh. had to sign his That's thigh. That's an interesting...